This video demonstrates the simplicity of a valent commercial cascade rig assembly, showing the adaptability and versatility of the product range available, which is suited to systems of one to eight boilers. The commercial rig will arrive with all of the boxes usually on a large single pallet. It is easily maneuvered using a pallet truck or small forklift truck, and the various parts of the rig are organized into section-specific boxes. Boilers and additional accessories such as plate heat exchangers or flue systems will arrive on separate pallets. Using the box labels, all rig parts should be cross-checked against the valent commercial rig brochure to ensure all parts have been delivered. The first step in the process of building the rig will be to assemble the basic frame. This is comprised of the two sidebars, the pipe support brackets shown here already fitted with adjustable feet, and the cross members that the boilers will eventually be fixed to. The top cross member can be fitted in one of two positions, depending on the size of the boiler that you're fitting. In this instance, we'll be securing the bar in its lower position to accommodate an 80 to 120 kilowatt boiler. Once the cross member has been aligned in the desired position, Simply push it into the left-hand sidebar of the frame and secure in place using the supplied bolts. This is then repeated on the right-hand sidebar to create a joined frame. Now that the main assembly for a single or dual boiler rig has been completed, there are options for additional sections to be added in the case that more boilers are required. The next step in assembling the frame is to add the pipe support brackets. Both of these parts are identical and will be fitted to opposite sides of the frame. The left-hand support will be fixed to the outside of the frame bar, and the right-hand support will be fixed to the inside. Once the pipe support brackets have been secured, the frame is ready to be stood up. Until the pipes are in place to balance it, the frame will have a tendency to tip backwards. Optional back feet can be added if the boiler is going to be freestanding in the middle of a room or simply pushed backwards to lean against a wall whilst the pipes are fitted. Once the frame is stable, either against the wall or with the additional back feet, the gas manifold is fitted. Ensure the longer stub is facing upwards and the short stub facing to the rear. Be sure to use the supplied gaskets within the flanges before securing the bolts. The end of the pipe can be sealed with the blanking flange and secured in place by tightening all of the bolts. The opposite end should also be secured in place, but this is a temporary measure until the pipework is connected to the final gas supply pipework. The next items to be fitted are the flow and return pipe headers. These are marked clearly with red and blue stickers that correspond to the position that they should be fitted to on the frame. The return header is the first to be fitted and will sit in the lower space on the rig. As with the gas manifold, use the gaskets and blanking flange for this part of the assembly. Once the return header has been secured, the flow header is fitted in the space above it, again using the gaskets and blanking flange. Once the pipes have been fitted, the next step will be to hang the boiler. The first part of this process will be to fix the hanging bracket which you will find in the top of the boiler box, along with the compression adapter, wall fixing bolts, and installation manual. After removing these parts from the top of the box, pull the zip tabs that are situated on the side of the box in order to get access to the boiler itself easily and conveniently. Remove the additional installation parts from the polystyrene supports on the bottom of the boiler and stand it upright. The sturdy base packaging will protect the boiler in this position until you're ready to hang it. Before lifting the boiler into position, the hanging bracket should be fixed onto the cross member of the frame using the bolts provided. Once this is securely in place, carefully lift the boiler and slot the metal tag into place on the hanging bracket. After checking that the boiler is properly placed, the polystyrene can be removed from the bottom of the unit. Now that everything is in place, the frame can be leveled using the adjustable feet on the frame, using a spirit level for a guide, 
simply turn each bolt until the rig is level on either side. Now that the boiler is in place, you can fit the pipework that is needed to connect the boiler to the headers that were fitted earlier. The gas pipe is fitted first with a suitable sealant applied to the threads. The compression adapter and offset gas pipe should be fitted to the gas isolation valve as shown. Separate the gas isolation valve at the union and fit the offset gas pipe to the gas manifold on the rig. Then fit the compression adapter to the boiler gas pipe, aligning the offset gas pipe and the union. Tighten as necessary. The under boiler parts are supplied as follows. The return and flow pipes, compression adapters, the return and flow isolation valves, the pump group, pressure relief valve, and the insulation, provided in three separate parts. Fit part one of the insulation to the pump. Offer the pump and insulation up to the boiler and fit to the boiler's one and a quarter inch union. Fit the return isolation valve and return pipe to the manifold with one and a half inch union. For cascade rigs, the alternate expansion vessel connection must be capped off. Fit the flow pipe and part two of the pump insulation to the boiler flow one and a quarter inch union shown here with pressure relief valve fitted. Repeat the procedure to install the flow isolation valve and flow pipe. Fit the condensate trap to the boiler using the clip provided. All safety valve and condensate traps should be connected to a suitable drain. The pump wire now needs to be routed into the boiler. Now, fasten securely with the clip. Now the rest of the underboiler insulation can be fitted. When the underboiler pipework has been completed, the wiring work of the boiler accessories can be done. This begins with the flue non-return flap being fitted into the boiler flue connection on top of the boiler. The wires attached to the non-return flap can then be pushed through the grommet to the left of the flue connection and fed into the boiler itself. The VR40 terminal board is supplied with the flue flap and can be added to the main circuit board and the components clipped into place. At this stage, the pump wiring can also be connected to the circuit board. At a later stage, the mains wiring, e-bus and additional accessories can be wired in. When this is completed, the front panel of the circuit board can be refitted. You will then be ready to begin the process of fitting the flue to the boiler. Begin by inserting the angled bracket into the top of the frame. This will slot in easily and shouldn't require much effort. Using the bolts supplied, fix the claw-shaped flue support bracket into place. The height, angle and grip width of this support bracket can be adjusted to fit the flue as necessary. The first section of the flue to be added to the main assembly is the 110mm elbow that fits into the non-return flap. The two larger pipes can then be lubricated with the water-based lubricant supplied and inserted into each other to form a larger airtight flue pipe. Grease or silicon must not be used to lubricate the flue seals. This structure can then be fitted to the top of the main assembly at a minimum angle of 3 degrees to allow any condens to drain back to the flue condensate trap. There are options for back-to-back -back rigs, which we will show here being fitted as an L-shaped add-on to the rig we just built with the aid of our round-the-corner kit, which is available for DN100 pipework only. The additional components supplied with a back-to-back -back rig are 
longer flow and return pipes, a gas pipe extension, rear support feet, and the non-return flap. The first step in connecting the two assemblies is to add the round the corner pipes at the back of the two rigs. The ends of the flow, return, and gas pipes that were temporarily bolted earlier in the main assembly can be securely fastened once the 90 degree flow return and gas pipes are all in place. The flues are connected next with the addition of all necessary pipework and supports for the cascade flue system. Now use the plate to plate heat exchanger to give complete system separation. This is the recommended method, especially if connecting the new boilers to an older, existing system that may be contaminated by corrosion. As a final step, the pipes can all be insulated to cover the underneath workings of the assemblies. The main pipe insulation segments are supplied as a block of parts that lock together. To fit these, place pieces one to three onto the back of the pipes and lock together. Then add the fourth front piece and final pieces to the flow and return pipes. Repeat this process for the entire assembly, finishing with the end piece. This completes the process, leaving you with a smart and fully insulated commercial boiler rig. Once the installation is complete and the system is filled and tested, the boiler will need to be commissioned by a qualified engineer and the results to be recorded in the benchmark logbook. This can be done by affixing one of the serial number stickers to the logbook of each boiler on the rig. For more information or to speak to a member of the commercial sales team, please contact Valent on 03 45 602 0262.